A Rectra Subtitle C landfill uses a compacted clay liner that is 4 feet thick with a hydraulic conductivity of 1.2 times 10 to the negative 7 centimeters per second. The leachate is currently 12 inches above the clay liner. With a porosity of 43%, the time required for the leachate to penetrate the liner is most nearly A. 11 B. 13 C. 15 or D. 17 Pause the video and give yourself 5 minutes to complete the problem. Have you finished solving the problem? Let's see if you got the correct answer. Today we'll talk about fluid flow through mediums. This is simply the fluids found and make their way underground in the cracks and spaces in the soil. It is stored in and moves slowly through geologic formations of soil, sand, and rocks called aquifers. Porosity or void fraction is your measure of the void spaces in a material and is a fraction of the volume of voids over the total volume, which is usually between 0 and 1 or shown as a percentage between 0 and 100%. Strictly speaking, some tests measure the accessible voids or the total amount of void spaces accessible from the surface. Lastly, Darcy's law is an empirical relationship for liquid flow through a porous medium. A common application is groundwater flow through an aquifer. Darcy's law gives us the relationship among the flow rate of the groundwater, the cross-sectional area of the aquifer perpendicular to the flow, the hydraulic gradient, and the hydraulic conductivity of the aquifer. The equation for Darcy's law is the following. It is based on the observation that the flow rate through a porous medium, such as an aquifer, is proportional to the cross-sectional area perpendicular to flow and is also proportional to the head loss per unit length in the direction of flow. Putting these two proportionalities together gives us the following equation, where Q is the flow rate of liquid through a porous medium, A is the cross-sectional area perpendicular to flow, HL is the head loss over a horizontal length, L, in the direction of flow, DH over DL is the hydraulic gradient, which is the change in head per unit length in the direction flow of an aquifer. K is the hydraulic conductivity. In this problem, we don't have any information with regards to the area of the clay liner. Additionally, since we are simply focused on time, let's reduce this equation down to focus on velocity instead of a volumetric flow rate, which leaves us with this equation. This is often called the Darcy velocity equation. Next, let's figure out what our hydraulic gradient is. As I said earlier, it is the head loss divided by the length of the medium of flow. So head loss in this problem is the distance between where the leachate currently is and where it's going. It's 12 inches above the liner, and since looking for how long it takes to get through the liner, we will add this to the thickness of the liner, which is 4 feet or 48 inches, and we get 60 inches as our head loss. L is the length of flow through our medium of interest, which in this case is the clay liner, which is 48 inches. Some make the mistake of using the total length of flow instead of only the flow through the medium, but remember that this is already accounted for in the head loss portion of the equation. So now that we have all of our information we need to solve for the Darcy velocity, we will convert our hydraulic conductivity to units of inches per second, and we get a velocity of 5.9 times 10 to the negative 8 inches per second. Next, we must account for the porosity of the clay, which is 43%. This means that the Darcy velocity is 43% of the actual flow through the clay liner. To find the actual flow, we would divide the Darcy velocity by 43% and we get an answer of 1.37 times 10 to the negative 7 inches per second. Now that we have the actual velocity, we can now find how long it will take the leachate to penetrate the liner. We've been working with the unit of velocity, which is distance over time. We can manipulate this to solve for time, which is distance divided by velocity. Using the thickness of the liner, which is 48 inches, and our velocity, which is 1.37 times 10 to the negative 7 inches per second, we get an answer of over 350 million seconds, which converts to 11.1 .1 years, which is closest to answer A. 
We'll see you next week for episode 10 of 52 and 52. Thank you.